I think it's probably right there with the four majors, if not even bigger. No money in the line, just everybody's pride. Trying so hard for your partner and your, your partner's caddy and your partner's wife and your wife and your whole team and not to mention the whole country. It's just a different, uh, different animal. Unless you played in one, you'll never feel on, uh, any sort of pressure like it. Mark Kalkovecchia has experienced just about every emotion the Ryder Cup has to offer. He enjoyed the highs of victory at Kiowa Island in 1991, but also suffered his share of lows along the way. The first one that I really remember uh, was the one here at PGA National in 1983. Uh, I actually went out and watched it. That one came right down to the wire. Uh, I, I think it came down to Lanny Watkins hitting a, a wedge in there close on 18. Ryder Cup, 25th edition, coming down to the final, final holes. It's seldom been this close in its long history. And he's done it. He's he it up close. Pretty good. All the way through 86, uh, I didn't really have any status. Uh, and then I got a, a few sponsor exemptions and I qualified for the U.S. Open at Shinnecock and, uh, and finished like 14th and then uh, and just had a fantastic uh, year in 87, uh, uh, won the Honda Classic. And from that point on, I just started racking up a bunch of top 10s. So I didn't really think about it until probably after I won the Honda and had some other top 10s and all of a sudden Mark Kalkovecchia's name's, you know, like seventh in the Ryder Cup list. And I'm like, wow, I could actually make the Ryder Cup team. Uh, and then my sole goal was, yeah, to make the team and, and just keep having top tens, and uh, I was able to do that. Get in the hole. He would only feature once in the opening two days, losing his foursomes match as Europe took a commanding five-point lead into the final day singles. There, Kalkovecchia was drawn against newly crowned Open champion Nick Faldo. He came through to win a closely fought match on the 18th green as the US side staged a fight back. But despite his best efforts, Europe stemmed the tide to earn their historic first win on US soil. Watching them celebrate, you know, it was kind of sickening. None of us were happy about it. And Jack, you know, was not, especially not happy, uh, you know, losing at his home course, uh, you know. I haven't, I haven't said that, you know, they just played better than us. And uh, again, I, I, it was my first one. And like I said, a, a year ago, to the date, I wasn't even on tour, so it, it all kind of happened so fast for me. Uh, you know, it was just kind of a new thing. Victory at the 1989 Open Championship guaranteed a trip to the Belfry as part of Ray Floyd's US team that came so close to taking the Samuel Ryder Trophy back across the Atlantic with them. Christy O'Connor, uh, rest in peace, Christy, hit that amazing two iron on 18. Fred lost the last hole. I think Mark McCumber lost the last hole. I think four of us lost the last hole. We ended up tying 14-14, you know, uh, we, we should have won that thing. Europe kept the cup because they won the year before, so we definitely felt like we gave that one away and uh, the, the feelings were not real good after that. A lot of, lot of, lot of tears and a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of people were pretty bummed out after that. Two years later, the U.S. team, captained by Dave Stockton, were intent on regaining the trophy at Kiowa Island. It was to prove one of the most fiercely contested Ryder Cups ever played. Keough Island was a strange place to have it. Uh, I went there three months before the Ryder Cup and I, I was like, I can't even believe they're having a Ryder Cup at this place. I mean, it, there was no roads. Uh, it was all sand and dirt and the clubhouse wasn't even halfway done. And I'm like, where are these people gonna walk? Uh, you know, I, I couldn't even imagine how they were going to have this event at this place. Uh, but anyway, they, they pulled it off. And uh, as it was all built up, you know, the war by the shore and all this other stuff, uh, you know, the crowd was, was crazy. And uh, uh, it turned out to be uh, one heck of an exciting event. Played against the backdrop of the Gulf War and in front of a partisan American crowd, tensions threatened to boil over with both sides battling for every point. The teams were tied going into the final day where Kalkovecchia would take on Colin Montgomery in the opening match. Despite racing into an early lead, he couldn't deliver the full point for the US team. Everybody really built me up and, and, and told me that 
when I got off to that big lead against Monty, it just fired everybody up. I was first off. You know, I was five up after nine, and everybody just said, yeah, you know, Calc's killing Monty. This is great, you know. And, you know, Dave Stockton just said that that was one of the whole reasons that everybody played so well that day. Kalkovecchia, once up by five over Montgomery, has seen his lead shrink to two with two to play. Kalk's wheels are falling off one by one as he drives his ball to a watery grave at 17. Obviously, I didn't handle it well after I lost the last four holes to Monty because I thought uh, that was going to cost us the Ryder Cup. Now Kalkovecchia has to hold this 12-footer to have the hole and give him a one-up victory. Never a chance. And the Europeans have collected a half a point in a match that appeared lost a short time ago. As it turned out, the way it kind of unfolded, uh, it kind of came right down to the wire. I had a, a hard time for a while, and I came back out and watched, and it was just crazy, the, you know, the fans. And, and I remember David Faraday, you know, grabbing me and saying, you know, it's not supposed to be like this, is it? You know, it was his first and only Ryder Cup. And, and I said, I, I don't know, man, I'm in a state of shock. So anyway, uh, when we were down, Payne, Payne and I were down at the front of the green. And, uh, you know, I didn't even see the putt. I was, there were too many people. And I heard our, our fans go crazy. And then Payne just grabbed me and hugged me and said, we won, we won, we won, you know. And then after that, it was kind of all a blur. To the captain to Captain Dave Stockton and his great American PGA team. Dave Stockton. You got it.